organized is a healthy habit. It can help you reduce stress so that you have less on your mind. That way, you can focus on the most important things to you. In this tutorial, I'm going to be walking through how you could create your own app for organizing things. In this case, we'll be organizing the list of books that we have at home. You could use the exact same kind of app to organize other things that you have. Maybe it's the things that you've learned in school, or maybe the video games that you have at home, or maybe it's the different kinds of Lego bricks that you have. Let's go ahead and get started. There's a few different parts to this project. We'll start by creating a table where all of our books will be saved. We'll take that table and then create an app automatically from it inside Power Apps. Then we'll finish by cleaning things up inside the app so that it looks and works the way that we're expecting. We'll begin by creating a table inside Microsoft Excel where we can save those books. In a new web browser, go to office.com. When the page loads, click Sign In. Sign in with your username and password. Once Excel loads, we can create the table that will hold all of our books. So how would we describe a book? What kind of information will we save about it? Well, every book has a title. Every book has an author. Every book has a unique identification number. It's called its ISBN number. And then, for our purposes, we're going to create a column for the cover of the book. And a cover is a kind of image. I put that inside square brackets so that when we create an app from this table, it'll know that it's expecting a picture there. Once I have my columns, what I'll do next is turn this into a table. So I click and select the row with my column names. Then from the home ribbon, I go to format as table. And then I click a color that I like. So I'll go ahead and select this one. It'll ask me a question. This is going to give me a confirmation of what row I have selected. And I have the option of clicking this checkbox for my table as headers. Click that because the row that we've selected are the names of the columns. It's the column headers. Then click OK. My table is almost finished. It needs a name. And then I need to save the file with a name. So with this table selected in any part of it, I go to the ribbon where I see the Design tab. In the Design tab, there's a field for the table name. I'll call this my Books List. Next, I'll save the file at the top center of the screen. I can save a different name for this file so I know which one it is. This is the spreadsheet that I'm going to be using for my books app. So I'll call this books app. My file is ready. I'll do one more thing here and I'll close out this spreadsheet. Next, I'm back inside the office portal. I'm going to create an app from that spreadsheet that I just created. So I click the office waffle. It shows me a list of the different apps that I have. If I don't see Power Apps appear, I can click All Apps. And then at the top, I'll do a search for Power. I can select Power Apps from that list. And this will load up what's called the Power Apps Maker Portal. This is where I make things. We just created an Excel spreadsheet. And so I could use Power Apps to create an app directly from that table. When Power Apps loads from the home page, under Start from Data, click Excel Online. Once Power Apps loads, it'll ask me to create a connection to OneDrive for Business. This lets me connect the spreadsheets that I just made so that Power Apps can have access to it to make an app. Go ahead and click Create underneath OneDrive for Business. Once the connection is created, 
Power Apps will show the different files that I have inside my OneDrive. I'll browse for that file that I just created, the Books app spreadsheet. Once that loads, I'll select the Books list and then click Connect. Power Apps is going to do some thinking now, and it'll create an app that'll let me create new books or add new books to my collection. I can edit the books that I've added, and then I can view the details of books that I have on my shelf. Let's go ahead and skip this tutorial. I'll do one final thing uh, before moving on to the next section. I like to choose a theme. So from the home ribbon, you'll see a button for theme, click it, and then choose a color that you like. I like the office blue theme. My app is actually usable in the state it is right now. And so you're finished at this point. Everything from here on is an optional customization to make the app look and feel the way that you're expecting. In this next section, we're going to be customizing the app a little bit further. But before we do that, let's save our progress. I can do that by clicking the File menu. In the Settings page that appears, I can give my app a name. I'll change it from App to My Books. I'll choose an icon that represents my app. I have many to choose from. I'll search for one that reminds me of books. And then I'll choose a color to go with it. So I like this color and icon combination. I'll go to the Save uh, button. And then at the bottom right corner, I'll click Save. My app will be saved up to the cloud, where I can open this app on any browser. I could open it on any device. And I could even share this app. Now, for our purposes, we'll save the sharing step. Let's go ahead and click the back arrow within the Power Apps Studio. I'm back in the studio. And what I want to achieve next is to make sure that this app looks and feels the way I'm expecting. Let's see how it works first. I can try out the app by going into preview mode. At the top right hand corner, there's a button to play the app. I can click that and now I'm experiencing the app in the way that I would be using it. Right now, I have no books on my books list. I can click the plus button to create a new book. I can see that it has all the different columns that I had created. I can type in a title, an author, a cover, and an ISBN number. I can cancel that form. And then I could even view books that I've already saved as well. For our purposes, let's move on to customizing this app the way that we're expecting. Now, in this form that I just showed, the first thing that you may have noticed is there's the four columns that we had created, but they're not in the order we're expecting. So let's move title close to author because that's a pair that typically goes together. I can cancel the preview mode by clicking Escape or clicking the X at the top uh, right corner of the Power App Studio. I could dismiss this prompt so it doesn't come up again. Then I select this form. From the tree view, I can expand the screen so I see all the different controls on the screen. I select Edit Form 1 and it selects the form. You can see that it has a blue rectangle around it. From the right-hand side of the screen, I click Edit Fields. This lets me reorder the different columns that are in my table. So I can click and drag title to the top. And if I want ISBN number above the cover, I can move that as well. Move it in a way that makes sense to you. And if you happen to add other columns, you can add them using Add Field. 
what we'll do next is we want to do the same movement inside the details screen of the app. So from the tree view, I can click details screen, expand the screen, click on the detail form, and then using that same pattern, I can go to edit fields, on the right side of the screen, click it, click and drag the different fields to be where they where I'm expecting them to be. So I like to have the title before I have the author. And then I like to have the ISBN number above cover. Now, let's customize the app even further. I can go back to the first screen of the app and let's walk through what we've done so far. I'll play the app. I'll add a new book. I have a book called The Imposter Syndrome Vanishing Spell by Donna Sarkar. I can save an, I, the, an ISBN number and a cover as well. I'll click Save for now by clicking that checkbox. And then in this table, I have the ability to search all the different books that I have. Right now, by default, if I were to type in a search term into that search box, it would only be searching by author. And I want to be able to search by title, author, even ISBN number. So what I could do is with clicking this browse gallery, it has a table that it's showing. It's showing the table of books that we have. What I'll do is expand the formula bar by clicking on the right side of the screen. And I can format this formula so that it has more spacing by clicking the format text button at the bottom of the formula bar. I'll click and drag to make this larger. Now it's a little bit easier to read what's going on in there. Here's my books list. I take whatever is typed into that search box, and then I could search against author, ISBN, and title. Then it sorts by author. So if there's an additional column that you want to search by, you can add a comma and then type in the name of the column inside quotation marks. The next thing I'll do is I noticed that on each screen of the app, there was a title that was automatically generated. And it wasn't as descriptive as I would have liked. So I can double click on that label. And the name of my app is my books. So I can type that in press enter or click outside. And it works just like PowerPoint. I'll go to the next screen, the details screen. And I could do the same thing at the top. I'll double click on that label. And I'll say book details. I'll repeat the same step for the edit screen. At the top, I'll double click that label. And I'll type in book form. I have one more thing that I want to do to this app. It's a finishing touch. It is really hard to type in an ISBN number. That's a lot of digits to remember. It could be 10 to 13 digits. So what I'll do is I can do an experience where I add a barcode scanner. Going to that edit screen, in that ISBN number, I can add a new control. So over on the left side of the screen, I can click the plus icon so that it shows the insert pane. This shows all the different controls that are available inside Power Apps. I'll do a search for barcode. Then I'll click and drag a barcode scanner until I see a purple box around where the target area is that I want this to be. I want it to be inside that ISBN box, so I'll let go when it's above there. 
I'll see a dialog pop up. It says this data card is locked. And that's so I don't make any unexpected changes to the form. So I can go ahead and unlock and add that control. It appears where I dropped it. So I'll click and drag it so that it is right on top of that field. And I can use those purple guidelines to help me. Now I need to do something else with this barcode scanner. I need to tell the app when I click that button and I scan a barcode, I want it to fill in this field. So I click this field, this text box, and it has a property that shows the app. This is the default text that should go in there. This is the value that should appear there. So in that default property, instead of having it show the default contents, I'll change it so that it takes the value of that barcode scanner, barcode scanner one dot value shows the value of the barcode scanner. And if it doesn't exist, then the coalesce function will take the value of the other option. So it just goes down the line until it finds a value that's not blank. We have one more thing to do. If a barcode scanner doesn't have a value, then things will work out when we scan things. But once we have scanned a barcode at least once, we want to reset it so that when you come back to this screen or you start a new form, it doesn't use that same ISBN number again. One place that I could clean things up is by going to the tree view selecting the screen, edit screen one, then using its on hidden property. This is the set of actions that occurs when I leave the screen. I can tell it reset that form, edit form one. So when I leave this screen for any particular reason, whether I'm canceling the form or whether when I'm done with the form, it'll reset that form as well as that barcode scanner. So now things are cleaned up. My app is in a really good state now. The barcode scanner will only work on a mobile device because it borrows that kind of capability from it. There is another barcode scanner available in Power Apps that'll work in the web as well. Let's do one more change because we made uh, several changes to this app. Let's publish all of those changes that we've made. So I'll go to the file menu. I click save. And once it's done saving, it gives me the option to publish. I need to click publish so that all of those changes that I've made go out to where this app appears. Now my app is finished. I hope you enjoyed making this app for cataloging the books that you have. Try out different challenges on making this app better. What else do you want to categorize? What kind of column names would you have in a table for that? Can you make a similar app for the things that you've learned? Try it out.